Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another view request and it deals with the coefficient of restitution. Now we don't see this concept very often and that's probably why the question. And so it all comes down to the definition of what the coefficient of restitution is. But the problem reads as follows. We're dropping an object from a height of 10 meters. It collides with the floor. It bounces back up. If the coefficient restitution is 0.7, to what height will the ball bounce back up from the floor, given that it was dropped from a height of 10 meters? Of course, we're, we're ignoring the, the uh, drag of the air or anything like that, so we're ignoring wind resistance. So the definition of the coefficient of restitution, and we use the letter E to denote the coefficient of restitution. So E, by definition, is V final over V initial. And you can see that as the ball comes down, it has the initial velocity prior to the collision with the floor and final velocity after the collision with the floor. And of course, we don't care about the signs. We simply care about the ratios of those velocities. All right. Now, there's various ways in which we can solve this. One way that I would like to show you is the following. We know that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. All right, if we now take the square root of both sides, that means that the square root of the kinetic energy is equal to the square root of one-half mv squared, which means that this is equal to one half, the square root of one-half m times v, which means that I can multiply the top and the bottom here by the square root of one-half m and the square root of 1 half m. Notice that these are just constants, therefore they cancel out, so I didn't change the fraction. The fraction is still the same. Then I realized that this represents the final kinetic energy, and this represents the initial kinetic energy, while not actually the kinetic energy, but the square root of the kinetic energy. So what we can write then is that the coefficient of restitution is equal to the square root of the final kinetic energy divided by the square root of the initial kinetic energy. And then, of course, we realize that since we're dropping a ball here from a certain height, that it has potential energy here and kinetic energy here. Here it has kinetic energy and potential energy, which means that the potential energy here is the same as the kinetic energy down there, and the kinetic energy down here is the same as the potential energy up here. So we can also write that the coefficient of restitution is equal to the square root of the final potential energy divided by the square root of the initial potential energy. And then, of course, we realize that potential energy can be written as mgh. So we could say that the coefficient of restitution is equal to the square root of mgh final. That's the final height gained. That's what we're looking for. Divided by the square root of mgh initial, which is the initial height that they gave us. Then, of course, we realize that we can get rid of the mg, both the top and the bottom, which means that the coefficient of restitution is equal to the square root of h final divided by the square root of h initial. Since we're looking for h final, we can square uh, the left side and the right side. So let's come up here. That means we can write that the coefficient of restitution squared is equal to h final divided by h initial. And since we're looking for h final, we can say that h final equals the coefficient of restitution squared times h initial. So here, we now can use the coefficient of restitution to figure out the final height if the initial height is given. So that means that h final is equal to the coefficient of restitution, which is 0.7 squared, times the height initial, which is 10 meters. This is 0.49, so we have h final is equal to 4.9 meters. And that is how we can use this technique to solve a problem like that, dealing with the coefficient of restitution. And that is how it's done, at least one of the many ways in which it can be done. So when you do the, so what is the coefficient of restitution? What does it, what does it mean? So what is the coefficient of restitution? Well, it's a means of determining how much of the energy is lost in the collision. If the coefficient of restitution is small, then of course you can see that it has a very small final height and therefore most of the energy is lost. 
If the coefficient restitution is large, that means it retains most of its energy through the collision. So, so it's a means of determining how much energy is, is, um, is kept through the collision. How do they measure? How do they come up with coefficient restitution? I would think they simply drop something. They want you to come back up. I think that's as simple as it is, yes. I don't think there's any other way to understand what the coefficient restitution would be in an object until you do an experiment on it. So I think it's experimentational. Could you just do this problem with conservation energy? Um, no, you can't. You cannot do it using conservation of energy because you're not giving anything. You're not told how much energy is lost. So the coefficient restitution is a way of describing how much energy is lost. So if you're going to do it using the conservation of energy, you have to be told something else, how much of the energy is lost. Can you find the, the so-called initial velocity? Well, you're, you're assuming that it doesn't bounce up at the same velocity as it goes up. That is correct. So the two velocities, the velocity coming down and the velocity going back up, will not be the same. If they were the same, then it's a perfectly elastic collision and you keep all the energy. That's right. Okay. In yeah. that case, you can. And in that case, you can. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Interesting problem. <laughs>